Hello and welcome to Groundwater Television brought to you by Franklin Electric. Groundwater TV is your home all week long for the 2015 Groundwater Expo, a source for you to keep up with all the news and notes that you're going to need to make sure that this year's Expo is the best ever for you and your company. Now, Groundwater TV, one great way to keep up with what's going on. Another, you're going to be able to hold right in the palm of your hand, keep up with everything. It's the NGWA app. You'll find that on your handheld device. It's a great way to keep up with uh, exhibit locations, like where folks are located, also individuals that you need you meet and how to stay in contact with them. All of that is on here as well as the daily agenda. Another great resource brought to you by the Groundwater Association and another way that this year's 2015 Groundwater Expo is going to be the best yet. In 2010, 33 Chilean miners were trapped 200 stories below ground. Jeff Hart was one of those individuals who helped rescue them. You probably saw that on TV and now a part of a movie called The 33. Good to see you, Jeff. I appreciate that. It's good to be here. This such an amazing. I remember watching it from my living room, you know, live coverage of this taking place. Kind of tell us how you became uh, involved in this amazing rescue. You know, it's one of those things where this type of target drilling is is something we were actually, you know, good at doing. We, we've done it in many mines before. Um, how they actually picked us, we don't know, as we were working in Afghanistan prior to that, and so we were so far away from anything. Uh, you know, it's hard to say how they, they actually got to us. So. Now, were you watching it on the news with everyone else, and then you got the call? Is that kind of how it worked out? Yeah, that's correct. We were actually watching it. Since we were in Afghanistan, we had... Uh, laptops basically so we could look it up online um, we were kind of following that as it goes and so you know as that story went on and then they actually called it was kind of surreal to us so the, the moment when they they were rescued I, I remember it, it's like globally there was this celebration what was it like to be there whenever uh, you you all made your way to it and, and the rescue actually happened you know once the rescue actually happened uh, up to that point we had worked so many days nights trying to make this thing happen we were ready to get away from it we were ready to kind of get out and so we had talked to the minister of the mines prior to that to say basically look we're gonna we're gonna head to santiago as soon as this is all over with he asked us not to leave the country um, so we watched the rescue just like everybody else but it was a very uh, gratifying thing when the last rescuer actually came up out of the ground we knew everybody had made it out safe and a uh, job well done so right. Now, there's a movie out that I mentioned. The 33 is the name of it. It's out right now. Um, you're played by James Brolin, which is, I think, pretty good to have James Brolin playing you in a movie. You know, I guess it is. It's, uh, it's very surreal, obviously, to have your name on the credits in the big screen. I was surrounded by a great team of guys. Um, it's too bad that uh, there's not more on the rescue. Like I say, I was just one of the individuals that was there. But yeah, obviously, uh, you know, I've said uh, James Brolin. Obviously, I must look worse than I feel. But uh, you know, hey, everything else is good. So, <laughs> have you seen the movie? Yeah, we actually uh, they put on a private screening for us uh, in Boulder, Colorado. So we were able to go see that, and then obviously went on opening day. And you can't hardly miss a movie that you're in on opening day. Right. So um, yeah, it was uh, it's a good movie. It's great. It's a great story about the miners. Right. Now, what are you up to now, and, and how has your life changed kind of post that event? You know, uh, life is pretty much the same. I love the drilling industry, um, trying to get younger people in there, trying to do as much education as we can. Uh, I moved to hydro resources where we're, we're mostly in just the water well industry now. I'm able to stay in the country, which is which is a very positive thing for me, obviously, with what goes on in the world. Plus, the travel just kind of kills you. So, uh, you know, just keeping up with, with the times, trying to get the, uh, the groundwater industry to grow. Well, you've got a story for the ages. You can tell the grandkids about this. That, that time uh, a movie was made about something I was involved in. There you go. Yeah, it's a big part of life. It's, uh, you know, a lot of history was made there, and uh, it, was, it was good to be part of. Yeah, it was really neat. Well, right. Jeff, good to see you. Congratulations you on that. And be sure and check out the movie. Again, the name of it is The 33. We're here in booth 1406 with Irvin Kramer of Aqua Locate. Irvin, tell us a little bit about what you guys do. Lockwood Locate is a geophysical company. We primarily sell GF6 seismoelectric systems around the world. The system can determine depth, yield, and uh, potential quality of an aquifer. Um, additionally, we provide services around the world uh, to people that don't have access to an existing operator. Um, we've sold it to six continents, people on six continents, and well over a dozen countries. Um, and we're here in 1406 to tell people a little bit more about what we do.
Again, make sure you visit the Aqua Locate booth here at the 2015 Groundwater Expo. We're here on the floor of the 2015 Groundwater Expo with one of our good old friends. Now that you're an old friend, a longtime friend. How about that? John Thank Miller of Mud Technology. Good to see you. Thank you, David. It's good to see you guys, too. Now, now tell us what you got here uh, this year. You, you guys always bring some really neat stuff. So, so tell us what we're looking at right here behind you. The unit you're looking at here is the RST-1400. It's okay. the largest of our Raptor Series units that we build for the water well industry. Okay. The unit has over 400 gallons per minute cleaning in a 1400 gallon tank. Right. Uh, new this year, we've added a variable frequency drive system okay. yeah. that uh, allows us to upsize the discharge centrifugal and utilize it to build more pressure mm -hmm. and volume so that the drilling contractors are able to take this unit and drill to a, a greater depth before they have to switch over to the bigger mud pumps that they have right. on their units. So in essence, they can use this unit and, and go further with it right. before they have to stop and move on to the bigger equipment. Uh, well, that, that's, a, that's a game changer there, isn't it? Well, it allows the guys sometimes to just take a, a small amount of loads instead of taking several, you know, numerous pieces of equipment that set on the location that they may or may not need. Right. All right, and tell us, tell us what else we, we have, some, some of the, maybe the newer developments in, the, in this piece of equipment. Well, some of the developments are when we put the variable frequency drive on there, we kept the same size generator, but we were able to upsize the electric motor that we run. Mm -hmm. So it's nearly double the size of the standard motor that comes on this unit. Also, we were able to increase the RPMs, which causes the centrifugal to give us more volume and a higher pressure, which is the benefit of this drive system. We moved the inlets at from the unit down lower so that when our customers hook up their hoses, keeps it down out of the way, cleans up the side of the tank so that everything that, that they hook up, with the exception of this discharge pipe, is all down low and, and user friendly. Now John, one of the great things about mud technology is you, you, you all really listen closely to the needs uh, of your customers and that's what uh, brought us this change here, huh? It is. David, one of the things customers ask us for was an easier way to set these units up. Uh, we looked at putting on uh, hydraulic jacks, electric jacks, which we can do both. This particular unit has the electric jack. It's got an electric motor on this side. It actually has a switch right here. You push it and it runs. The does, the work, does the work for you? It does. In case the motor does go out, there still is auxiliary handles that can be put on this unit so that the customer can get the unit up and, and move it out of the way in case of a, of a challenge. One of the things we incorporated into our system last year were our easy open clean out doors. Mm -hmm. There are two levers that compress down, hold the doors themselves closed and sealed until the end of the job when it's time to clean the tanks out okay. and get ready to move to the next job. There's two levers, you pull both levers and you flip the door back out of the way, allowing easy access to the tank compartments. This makes it easier on the customer to be able to clean the tanks and get the system ready to go to the next job. David, another feature we have on this unit is our, our centrifugal pumps. There's two styles of pumps that are used. One is the rope packing, which takes a rope style packing in there with compression to help seal this. The other is the mechanical seals. The mechanical seal itself actually is a sealing assembly, assembly that works on its own to keep the liquid out and off the ground. Mud technology as of 2015 uses 100% mechanical seals in all of their units thereby keeping the, the pollution down or keeping the mess down on the location and protecting Mother Earth. So it sounds like a great piece of technology, a great piece of equipment, um, and more reasons why folks need to come by and see you in booth 757. Yes, we uh, invite everybody to come see us here at the Groundwater Show 2015. Please come by and introduce yourself and get to know us. I think we can show you what we have available and what we can do for you. Right. And uh, everybody welcome. Yes. 757 is the booth uh, number, Mud Technology, all about building relationships, and they'd love to build a relationship with you. So come by and see them here on the floor at the 2015 Groundwater Expo. Thank you. Here in booth 711 with Kamal of CRI Pumps. Kamal, tell us a little bit about what you all do. 
Hi everyone, uh, we, I am from CRI Pumps. We are a large manufacturer of uh, water pumps, mainly borehole pumps, uh, all stainless steel, as well as the motors, right from 4 inches up to 10 inches. We go up to half horsepower, up to 300 horsepower of motors. And we export to almost to 120 countries. And uh, we are in this region for last 10 years and doing a good job. And we also have an uh, inventory uh, maintained here in Oklahoma City. Uh, so we, uh, we are looking for a good uh, dealers to buy and the water well dealers to buy our products. Thank you very much and uh, welcome to visit our booth at 7-Eleven in the Groundwater Expo. Thank you. Uh, 2015 Groundwater Expo, again CRI Pumps here in booth 7-Eleven. Here in booth 719 on the floor of the Groundwater Expo, this is the Franklin Electric booth here with Scott Staten. How are you? Good, how are you? Doing good. Good to see you again. Good to see you, again. you guys at Franklin Electric, you always bring something uh, something neat, uh, the latest technology. Tell us what you what you got this year. Absolutely. We're always trying to bring out new products, and this is another new one this year. If you remember, we brought out the SubDrive last year, right. and it had FE Connect in it, which is basically you're connecting to a uh, smartphone uh -huh. and you can control and set up do your setup on the system we're doing the same thing with a new product which is our sub monitor this is our motor protector we've had it for years but this is a completely redesigned one with the newer technology nowadays you can just come out with a lot lot neater stuff for the for the market right. so this one has got a detachable face it's a NEMA 4x can, the face can go on the front of a control panel. We're showing an actual one of our larger control panels here with Franklin Control Systems. And it's got a lot of other features you can see in there as well. We've got some input and outputs on the front that are much easier to get to, much easier to set up. And it's a very small, it's small and it's smaller than the old design. And it's uh, very modular and easy to, and very flexible. This display that was really awesome, we've, the way we've set it up, so we can actually demonstrate to, to the well drillers that are in the show, mm -hmm. is we're going to demonstrate what we'll do is we'll pump the basin dry, which is just like pumping a well dry, yeah. and the system's going to shut the shut the motor down right. because it's a motor protector, and that's one of the features it has built into it. Yeah, you're going to want to make sure that you come by, as always is the case here at the Expo, uh, the Franklin Electric booth, again, it's 719, uh, going to be here all week, and a lot of neat stuff looks like you got here. We're looking forward to it. It's going to be a great week. Franklin Electric, again, booth 719 here at the Groundwater Expo. Here in booth 1302, this is Proactive Environmental Products. This is Megan and Farah. Good to see you guys. Just kind of, first of all, just kind of tell us a little bit about the company. Proactive Environmental Products continues to engineer and manufacture the most innovative 12 volt groundwater pump systems, uh, field supplies, and filters uh, available for the last 25 years. We're known globally for our Monsoon, our, our 12 volt stainless steel pump system, right. uh, for its simplicity and reliability. Uh, there's no need to take heavy gas generators out to the site anymore or air compressors. Um, you know, if you're driving to a well, you just take the pump, hook it up to a 12 volt deep cycle battery, turn the dial, and you're sampling. So it's that simple. As far as sample integrity is concerned also, um, we have one client who implemented our 12 volt sample champ pump and primarily they wanted to just streamline their sampling process. Right. But what they found out was that for the past 10 years, they were sampling and getting readings of 400 NTUs. Once they implemented our pump, they were getting readings of two. So that's a huge difference. So tell us, what, what is next for Proactive? Uh, well, Proactive, we have a lot of technology in the works. Stay tuned, come by our booth at 1302. Uh, check out what we have. The whole pump lineup is here. Yeah, it's going to be a good week, isn't it? Yeah, thanks. And sample like a champ. Don't forget, free beer. <laughs> also, 1302, again, proactive environmental products. Here on the floor of the 2015 Groundwater Expo, booth 757. That's where you'll find Mud Technology. David Bosser uh, is with uh, Mud Technology. Tell us about the piece of equipment we're standing in front of here, Dave. Okay, thank you, David. This unit we're looking at here is a DCP-125. It's a 125 horsepower diesel engine, which drives a 250 series centrifugal pump, mechanical seals, maximum impeller. Um, it features a 70 gallon tank for operation for the entire day without having to stop and refuel. Now you all have a couple of different kinds of pit pumps. Let's start with this one here. Talk okay, to us about that one. This pit pump over here is a new design that we're improving on constantly. It's a above ground pit pump. It comes with a, a tank that can, where you don't have to actually dig a hole in the ground. This pit pump is freestanding. The fluid will come out of your drill hole, go into a tank, and be recycled without ever touching the ground. Talk to us about the specifications of, of, okay, of this right here. The specifications of this particular unit are, are that it's capable of generating in excess of 160 PSI. At little or no pressure, it can produce 700 gallons a minute. At maximum pressure, 
of 160 PSI, 400 gallons a minute. Uh, it's a powerful pump, um, driven with such a large motor, it, it's a great aid in uh, moving the fluid out of your hole. The one over that we have over here is basically the same design, except that this actually goes into the pit in the ground. So if you have questions, the David and the folks here at Mud Technologies, they have the answers. Again, booth 757, come by and see our friends here at Mud Technology. Here with Scott Staten of Franklin Electric. You guys always have such a fantastic booth and, and such a great opportunity for folks to come by, meet you, see you, uh, and check out what you all are up to. Uh, tell us what we're in front of right here and, and, and some of the new things going on at Franklin Electric. Well, this is a new addition to our solar product line. Uh, we started out with solar a couple years ago. We've really advanced it this year. This is a new modular design. We're calling it the Photon. Okay. And, you know, it's basically an in inverter. It's taking your DC current from your solar panel. It's going to convert it into AC current and run a motor. We do that with our current uh, sub drives right now and we've added to it with, like I said, with this Photon and we have quick packs. So what that means, you're going to get a pump, motor, and the drive all in one package. Very competitive and very innovative product. It's modular now, it's repairable in the field, and it's a NEMA 4X enclosure, which means you get it out there in these remote areas where you don't have the grid power mm -hmm. and uh, it needs to be protected. So this is the design we have. Uh, actually at the show, if you come by our booth, you'll check it out. We'll be actually running this motor right here, which is actually a surface motor. Our, new, our first iteration of this, we're going to be running our submersible motors mm -hmm. and pumps and having those as a package. But if future occurrences of this, we're going to innovate a little bit more and we'll be able to run a surface motor and have some different programming in it. Yeah. It's a very innovative product and we're really excited about it. Uh, t tell us, uh, for you all at Franklin Electric, uh, the Groundwater Expo, um, what is this an opportunity for you all to do? Uh, it's really an oppor opportunity for us to shine and show what we're doing in the market, show, show the, the market and the well drillers out there mm -hmm. what we're doing and what we have available to them right. and how we're leading the market with innovation. And just if you could take a look at our display, if you yeah. get to see our booth when it's ready, uh, it's, it's really it's stellar. Yeah. It's awesome. It, it, it's stunning for sure. Scott, appreciate the time. And you're going to want to make sure at the, this year's Groundwater Expo, make it by booth 719 to see the good folks at Franklin Electric. You'll find the Rex McFadden Company in booth 536 here at the 2015 Groundwater Expo here with Dawn. Tell us a little bit first of all about the company. Well, um, it originated about 55 years ago. I'm Rex McFadden's daughter and he passed away around three years ago. So my daughter and myself are running the company. Mm -hmm. We're located in Lubbock, Texas. We've uh, specialized probably in our Skyrex elevators, uh, one and a half inch up to 30. Uh, everything you'd need for uh, oil well equipment, water well equipment, um, and we're just, we love all our customers, yeah. come by and see us. Um, we love what we do and we'd be thrilled to help you. Yeah, booth 536 again, the Rex McFadden Company. Some, come by and uh, see these guys here at the 2015 Groundwater Expo. 
the 2015 Groundwater Expo off and rolling here on the Muttech stage, right in the middle of the showroom floor with uh, an esteemed guest. This is Sora Panday. He is the M. King Hubbard Award winner. A little bit of a background uh, on you, sir. You're with GSI Environmental out of Newport Beach, California. And uh, you're this year's recipient again of the M. King Hubbard Award. And, and just by way of background, that's presented to a person who has made major science or engineering contributions to the knowledge of groundwater through research, technical papers, teaching, and practical applications. So first of all, congratulations. Thank you, David. Now, um, for you, what does this award mean to you? This award is a lifetime achievement award for me. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop doing things, right. but it's, it's an honor. And when you look at the list of names of previous recipients, right. Uh, it's, uh, there are it's really esteemed group. names, yeah. it's quite a group, quite a yes. group. Uh, I feel uh, humbled by it. A, a quote uh, of someone about you, and, and um, it says, his contributions to our industry over your 26 year career are more far reaching and nuanced than simply authoring industry leading software. Um, so 26 years you've been involved in this industry, huh? That is correct. Yeah, and, and then what was it that got you into it? Oh. Uh, I, it started with my PhD and uh, with my master's degree and I always wanted to do something with codes and coding and that is where the funding was. So yeah. that's what led me into this industry actually. Yeah, it sounds like it was a pretty good choice 26 <laughs> years ago. It was and, yeah. and when you know there's funding for a student, you know that there's a job ahead of you. Right. So. How rewarding has, has your 26 year career been? to you personally and, and intellectually as well? It's been extremely rewarding. I've enjoyed doing this. It's, it's, it's a pleasure. It's like they say, when you enjoy your job, it's not a job, and that's how I feel. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're, you're best known as the author of the Modflow USG, uh, and, and it, it, are you fine with that kind of being a part of your legacy in this industry? Yes, I am. I think it's a good achievement. I think it's something that the industry was looking forward to. Right. And we just did it. And more than just me, it's a collaboration. It's been a collaboration with a lot of people, and it's been working, and we continue to work on that collaboration. Yeah, and, and word is, you're, you're updating? That there's going to be an update? That is correct. We are going to have more updates coming soon. Yeah. Soon is all you'll say, huh? Soon. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations on, on, on the award. You're, you're quite respected in this industry. Thank you, David. And then enjoy the, uh, the 2015 Groundwater Expo. Thank you so All much. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Sora Panda, the winner of the M. King Hubbard Award here at the 2015 Groundwater Expo. All roads of the 2015 Groundwater Expo lead to the Mudtech stage, the NGWA stage you'll find right in the middle of the convention hall. We're here with Zhangbo Yu. He is the winner of the John Him Award for Excellence in Science and Engineering in recognition of outstanding scientific contribution to the understanding of groundwater. Uh, thanks for being with us and congratulations on, on this award. Sure, David, thank you. What does it mean for you to, to walk away with the John Him Award for Excellence in Science and Engineering? I think uh, the most is uh, for recognition the, over the years, my research work and also the collaboration with my colleagues and students uh, being with me around the years. Right. And, and uh, you, you've been, at, you're, you're at UNLV is where you are. How long have you been at UNLV? Oh my gosh, it's been almost uh, just over the 15 years. 15 years. Um, I know to get an award like this and this type of recognition, I'm sure there's a, a great deal of hard work that has gone into it. For you, has it seemed like hard work or is it something you're really interested in and, and it's kind of like you're doing something you enjoy? Yeah, I think it's uh, your last part, something I've been doing, enjoying doing it mm -hmm. over my entire life. So it's uh, kind of naturally going to work every day, I go into the field and work in the lab with the students. So. Right. I would say, you know, maybe when you look at the work, maybe it's hard, but for most of the part, I'm really enjoying doing what I'm doing. Yeah, and you really enjoy the research aspect of it, right? Yeah, that's right. And also teaching too, because, uh, you know, I want to share what the, my research in the classroom, so still can, t can take in the classroom how I've been doing the research 
ready to, to look at how the groundwater, you know, how that really the access to us uh, right. for uh, the important resource. Now, you're at UNLV, so I would think it would be easiest for you to get here uh, than anybody else, but you said you, you flew in late last night. So, so tell us, what, what are you working on now? Uh, yes, um, I just came from uh, training last night, uh, uh -huh. just for this convention. And, you know, most of my window break, you know, I'm going to China and some other country to really to look at how the climate change being affect the groundwater resource. Right. And, uh, you know, before that, when I come to Las Vegas, we spent lots of time really studying the Yucca Mountain, how that contamination could potentially endanger the groundwater resource here in Las Vegas, in Nevada, and right. so forth. Yeah, so you're staying busy, huh? <laughs> yeah, staying busy. Well, congratulations, Zhang Bo Yu, the winner of the John Him Award for Excellence in Science and Engineering here at the 2015 Groundwater Expo. On the Mud Tech stage at the 2015 Groundwater Expo here uh, with Vic Kelson. You're at the Lane Christensen, and you're here because you all won an award. Uh, it's the Outstanding Groundwater Supply Project. You're a co-recipient in that. Uh, first of all, when, when you heard the news that you all won, what, what's that feeling like? We were thrilled. Uh, it's, it, uh, it was a great project, and the project itself was the the most rewarding thing I've ever worked on. It's a, a very different kind of situation. Yeah. And so uh, we were thrilled that, uh, that to get the award because it it really um, made even more clear how, how special this work was to us. Right. And we're really happy to be here. So uh, tell us a little bit about, about the project itself. It was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, it right? Is, yes, um, in, in Baton Rouge there's uh, a problem with salty groundwater coming across a fault okay. on the south side of town. And so uh, as uh, water withdrawals exceed the, 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 the natural yield of the formation, what's happened is salt has started migrating northward from the fault. Mm -hmm. And uh, over about 50 years, they've been seeing the salty water arriving in production wells. And so the problem they wanted, to, what, what the water company wanted was to stop the salty water from getting to a well field. Right. And so the project we did um, we, we pump away the water that has the salty water, but since the salty water is all at the bottom of the formation, uh, by using two wells, one above the other, we pump the fresh water off to be used as produ produced water for the right. water company, and the salty water goes to waste. It, it's, now, you, you explained that well, but it sounds pretty complicated. Was it, was it more difficult than you anticipated? Well, it was... The hardest thing about it, uh, well, first of all, we had to simulate uh, the, the design. We had mm -hmm. to do modeling to, to demonstrate to ourselves that a particular configuration of wells would work effectively uh, uh, just because we couldn't put both wells exactly in the same place. Right. They're 1,500 feet deep, so it, you wow. have to be uh, attentive to, to, to how far apart the wells are going to have to be mm -hmm. simply to get them constructed. Right. And so we had to do modeling to demonstrate that it would work. And then we had to convince uh, our entire project team, which was uh, Owen and White Engineers of Baton Rouge and Baton Rouge Water uh, Company. Um, everyone was on board with the concept. Mm -hmm. And we had to really demonstrate to ourselves and to, to clients and to all the members of the team that the, that the project would work. You, you refer to this as the most rewarding project of your career. Um, why, why so? Well, Baton Rouge has been uh, witnessing this advance of salty water in that aquifer for half a century. Right. And. Uh, it really is threatening to the public water supply, and also there's industrial supply that's affected there as well. So, uh, from a, from a policy perspective, there's a real challenge in uh, trying to decide first of all uh, how are we going to use this aquifer wisely, and also uh, which is a long-term project. Just tr trying right. to figure out what that's what's going to happen there. That's not what I do. <laughs> yeah. um, our job was to to make sure that they could continue to use this well field for another. 20 or 30 years. Right. So um, what what we're really doing is we're affecting the, the lives of the citizens People. of Baton yeah. Rouge and visitors and, and all the things that go on there simply by uh, helping to make sure that the water supply remains robust and 
yeah. sustainable. It, you know, oftentimes here at, at uh, the Groundwater Expo, it's, it's often about the equipment, and there's so much conversation about equipment, but it really does boil down to how it affects people's lives. That's that's exactly right. Yeah, and that's the bottom line. That's what this was about for us. Well, Vic, thank you, sir. Congratulations you. to you and Lane Christensen and, and all the folks down there in Baton Rouge. Thank uh, you. And, can I, and I want to thank NGWA uh, and uh, all the people here have been great. It's been a real pleasure and a, uh, a good time to be here. And yeah. also thank all of our colleagues in Baton Rouge uh, at Owen and & White and Baton Rouge Water Company. Congratulations to you all. Award winners here at the 2015 Groundwater Expo. Here with Bob Cleary on the Mud Tech stage of the 2015 Groundwater Expo. Good to see you, sir. Thanks for spending some time with us. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Uh, you're, you're up here, we're, we're chatting because of a, a special recognition award recipient, is what you are, uh, for, for your work. Uh, first of all, whenever you found out that you, you won that award, how did uh, that, that had to give you a sense of satisfaction? It was a great deal of satisfaction, uh, yeah. especially because it was recommended, or let's say no, I was nominated by one of my peers, one of the people who teaches with me right. in my courses. And then he got support from other people I teach with. The Princeton Groundwater courses have, I think, the best teachers in the world. Right. And when your own peers nominate you and write nominating letters, when I read the letters, I was just, it just, it just thrilled me. Yeah. Thrilled me. And then when I found that I won, you know, they awarded me and I won that particular award. It was right. very, very satisfying. It, there is, um, um, you, you taught a, pr a professional development short course um, for a good while and you actually developed a course. So, so talk to us, tell us about that. What, what did you develop? Uh, and what, what were those courses that you developed? Okay, well the first course that we taught and developed was back at Princeton University back in the, the late 70s. It was called the Princeton Groundwater Pollution Hydrology Course. Mm -hmm. And that course went on till I'd say, well it still goes on today, but the follow-up course to that was called the Princeton Remediation Course. Right. And that started in 1995. A year before that, 1994 I believe it was, at least they said that today, I would, couldn't remember back that far, I began teaching in the, the National Groundwater Association Mod Flow course. Right. And that's been going on every year, once a year. The remediation course we teach twice a year, and the groundwater pollution hydrology course we teach three times a year in the U.S. and once a year in Brazil. Mm -hmm. you, you've worn many different hats over, over the years, but is it, is it teaching that you most enjoy? Yes. Yeah, teaching no is, doubt about is, it? Teaching is my calling. My, is it really? I have a co vocation in life and uh, love teaching. Yeah. I love teaching in a Princeton course. It's, it's like having a private university. Yeah. And, and how yeah. many students um, would you guess um, you, you've impacted yeah. and taught over the years? We looked at them, and it, to our surprise, I suppose, uh, over 20,000. Wow. It's hard to believe. But that, back, that is amazing. Yeah, yeah, but back in the 80s, when groundwater was growing, uh -huh. we were teaching these courses four times a year, and in each course we'd have 160, 180 people. Mm. Our largest course was 213, I remember back in 1993. Mm. So groundwater was taking off in the right. 80s, and so teaching four times a year, and then and we have the remediation course twice a year, and those all add up right. over time, and you wonder, you know, have, have we taught them all? It seems like <laughs> they keep coming, coming, huh? They keep coming. Yeah. yeah. Now, talk to us uh, just a bit. Also, uh, you, you've had a fascinating career. Uh, right. Talk to us about spending 12 years in Brazil. Yes. Uh, after leaving Princeton University in 1979, I moved to Brazil, and then I ended up as a teacher at the Institute of Geosciences, which would be Institute of Geology. And they call them institutes. Right. The Department of Ge uh, Geology in the States, uh -huh. as a professor there from, from 1980 up to 1991, when I came back to the States. Yeah. And uh, so I ended up learning Portuguese. I'm fluent in Portuguese. I can write it and read it and, and speak it. Right. And I had a chance to write a chapter down there uh, called Groundwater, Aguas Subitahanias, <laughs> okay, which is in Portuguese, which they use in Brazil. Yeah. In, in your nomination, th this is what was said of you, that, that your, your courses were impactful and that the content is unmatched. Yeah. Is that is that satisfying to hear that? It's very satisfying. That's uh, Murray Anderson was the one that nominated me and wrote that up, and uh, I was very pleased to hear that. And I and I think it's I think it's true. We try very hard to give the very best stuff, cutting edge material for the students, and we get a lot of feedback from them. And of course, the course is still popular, so which means that they enjoyed it, and, and they keep coming back and telling yeah. us that. It works. Yeah, you, you run into you say you run into folks all the time who all, say all the time, yeah. all the time. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, congratulations. Well, well, thank you. Thank um, you very much. Many years of, of faithful service, and you've all impacted right. a great many lives. So, so congratulations on that yeah. and for this award. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Bob Cleary, the winner of the uh, Special Recognition Award uh, here at the 2015 Groundwater Expo.
Here with Michael Capana of Oregon State University talking about the National Groundwater Research and Educational Foundation. And now, uh, the, the, uh, the educational, uh, the, the foundation, talk to us a little bit about what, what is the mission of it? What, what is the work you're trying to accomplish? Well, as, as the name says, David, we, we're focused on education and research, and we have a number of educational programs. Um, we, we give out a number of different scholarships, both to graduate students, undergraduate students, and high school students who are interested in um, a future in the groundwater industry. Right. Um, we support uh, our two lecture series, the McElhinney Lecture Series mm -hmm. and the Darcy Lecture Series. That's supported through um, foundation funds. Um, we also have a res research, scarred me, getting laid in the That's research right. funds, yeah. uh, where we have we can fund small research projects. When I say small, on the order of maybe no more than fifteen or twenty thousand right. dollars, and and these research projects are open to anybody. So uh, if a contractor has a great idea, or a scientist or engineer, or a student or something like that, we'd encourage them to to submit a proposal. Would there, again, we accept them not throughout the year, but there's certain times, right. you know, we accept them. Right. And uh, we also have uh, one thing that's close to my heart is the Developing Nations Fund. And this is oriented specifically towards organizations or individuals who are working on water supply, groundwater supply, or groundwater protection work in a developing nation. And so we can give out anywhere, I think, maybe a maximum of $15,000 or so. We're doing something interesting this year. We gave an award um, to Melissa Lencheski from Northern Illinois University. And what Melissa is going to do is she's going to the country of Myanmar, which most people know as Burma, and which recently um, looks like it's going to be returning to democracy. And in this coming summer, um, and I'm going to go over with Melissa, we're going to conduct a two-week short course on essentially basic hydrogeology at uh, one of the universities there. And this is interesting because they know groundwater is important over there, but they don't really know much about it. And they have very few um, tools, virtually no books. They sometimes have internet access when the power is on. And so we're going to go over there and teach uh, faculty and some students some of the, the basics of groundwater. Yeah. Uh, how is the, the best way for folks to find out more um, about the National uh, Groundwater Research and Educational Foundation? Well, the best way to do it is if you drop by our booth, we have copies of the um, annual report from last year, but you can just go to the NGWA website, ngwa.org, and as you go along the top there and you see the various items, it says, I believe it says charitable foundation or foundation, right. and you can go there and you can see all the different funds we have. We have, I, I believe at last count, we have seven or eight different funds, and you can even donate there, and you can specify your donation to go to this fund or that fund, right. or just put it in the kind of an unrestricted fund. So. Um, but that's the best way to find out about it. Or if you can buttonhole me or one of the other foundation board members, we'll bend your ear about the uh, NGW um, Research and Educational Foundation. And I also want to mention that this is a 501c3. It right. is a charitable foundation. It's separate financially from the main organization, so your donations are tax deductible tax to the fullest extent of the law. Yeah, great calls, a great thing that uh, the National Groundwater Association does. So head to that website and take advantage of that. Michael, thanks for your time. David, thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Here on the Mud Tech stage of the 2015 Groundwater Expo with Ken Wood. Ken, you are a recipient of a Life Member Award. So first of all, congratulations for that. Thank you. Now, a Life Member Award, uh, that's pretty prestigious. When you found out you'd won that, how did that make you feel? Mm, too old. <laughs> I hope it's not over yet. <laughs> oh, it's not over. No, it's uh, not, not over for sure. You, you, your, your story in, in your career, your life, ha has really taken a, a fascinating turn. So let, let's kind of try to recap it. So, so you were just in the groundwater industry, just kind of minding your own business, right? Growing a business. Yeah, we, we uh, had grown pretty big at the time, and uh, right. uh, we had an old rig for sale in a mission from York, Pennsylvania, uh, came to buy it and send it to Ghana, and uh, uh, they, not knowing that they need another $100,000 worth of equipment to go with the rig, uh, anyway, uh, right. long story short, uh, they got the rig over there, uh, paid for that with their church money, and 
and asked if I would go teach the locals. And I said, maybe. Right. And two weeks later, I go to a bank seminar in South Carolina, mm -hmm. and a key speaker comes out and says, my name is Albert, I'm from Ghana. <laughs> and that scared the bejesus out of me. Took that as a sign, huh? <laughs> Absolutely, but yeah. the, furthermore, his speech was on having to walk two miles twice every morning to get water out of a scum pond. Wow. And that he was taking shots to this day from the water that he was drinking. Now, so, what when, year? When, when, when God calls, pick up the bloody yeah, that's phone. Right. That's right. So, now, what year was this? When did that take place around? That was, um, uh, that was all in early 06. Early 06. Yeah. All right. So, so from that point, that sort of auspicious <laughs> beginning, kind of reluctantly diving in, you, you, in, in Ghana, uh, and, and now Tanzania, right? Yes. And, and how, many, how many wells have you personally uh, been a part of, of uh, being drilled? Built? Uh, personally, uh, 400 in Tanzania and probably 600 in Ghana. We, we have over 1,000 in Ghana now. But, Goodness. Uh, uh, at least 600 in Ghana, maybe. Uh, and, and, and how many lives does that affect over there? So, so with those... A thousand wells. How many? How many people uh, have been impacted? They tell me about a million, but uh, Albert, the guy that was giving the speech that day, uh, tells me that's for one day. So this year, next year, next year, right. you're, you're affecting a million, and maybe ten years, it's another million, just with a few that you've done. You know, so that's kind of encouraged me a little bit more. You know, yeah, so. that, that just seems amazing to me. A, a million people. From 06 to now, um, it, 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 um, that's just incredible. As you hear about that and hear about the impact, does it, does it humble you and surprise you a bit? You, you don't have to tell me anything. It, it's all, you feel it in the heart. You, know, right. you, you don't have to say, nobody has to say anything. You walk through the villages and no one has to say anything. You, you just get it. It's, it's, that's my paycheck. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, congratulations. Yes, on sir. the award, and thanks so much for all that you do. That, that's, that's just incredible. Thank you.